Hi, everyone. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday. Uh, super glad to have you here this week. Hope you're hanging in there. Um, we are really excited this week to have Brenton Webster with us and to talk about some cool event technology and, and tools. And we're all optimistic as we look into the getting ready to go back to live events. And so I'm excited to have Brenton here. Um, he and I have had the opportunity to work on several events. Um, he's from, based in the Seattle area. But Brenton, tell us a little bit about your, your journey into events as a business. Certainly. Well, first, thanks for having me, Lynn. I appreciate having me on. Um, so my journey into events, we'll have to roll the clock back a little bit. That's but fine. <laughs> um, I actually, I'm from Australia, as you can, as people can probably tell, you obviously know. Um, I moved over here back in 2000, so like 20 years ago, um, originally to work for Microsoft. And Worked at Microsoft for a long time. Um, during my tenure at Microsoft, one year, myself and a mate of mine decided it would be a cool thing to throw like a combined birthday party because you know we're both from Australia and we both have our birthdays in March. And so we thought, yeah, why not? May as well, may as well put, put on a fun event for people. Um, and we actually modeled it after this event that we'd heard about in the Australian Outback where people literally like bus fly and chopper in from all over the place to attend this like black tie party under the stars. Cool. And yeah, it's really cool. And so we thought that was a really cool concept for an event. And as you know, Seattle is a very casual town. So we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we basically hosted this black tie party and invited like 80 people who we knew and thought would be interested in such an event. And within about a month, that email list had ballooned from 80 to over 400 people. Oh. And this was sort of back before like Facebook and, and all that kind of stuff. So it sort of went viral back before that was a thing. And anyway, we, we had had this event. It was a ton of fun, this like big black tie um, party thing. And after that, um, you know, the next year we did it again. And the next year we did it again. And it just kept growing and growing. And so um, at some point, I actually realized that, you know, there was, there was a big problem that we faced around ticketing. Because back in those days, things like Eventbrite didn't exist. So there wasn't an easy way as just an independent event organizer to like sell tickets and whatnot. So how did you even do, how did you sell the tickets for the, the early, oh, the early, early parties? Yeah. So the very first one was free. Uh, we had, we didn't charge any tickets for that. But the next one we rented out a venue and we had to like cover some costs there. So uh, we actually used like Evite and their pretty crappy PayPal integration. Um, and it was sort of a nightmare because the Evite list didn't match the people who paid on the PayPal list. And I actually ended up writing a bit of software to like take the data from Evite and from PayPal and to match it up. And it was like a little, a little application we used at the door to check people in. And that was sort of my aha moment where I realized that um, there's just no good solutions for this out there. And so I ended up leaving Microsoft and starting a company called Shindig, which is an event ticketing company. And worked on that for, for many years. Um, and at some point I realized that that market was very saturated. And I also realized that when I was throwing these events, and we started off with that one birthday party per year, but it grew to the point where we were doing three to four events per year ranging anywhere from a thousand to 3,500 people. Wow. And the biggest problem that I would have um, was long bar lines. And you know, everybody, everybody hates that. Like nobody wants to go to an event to stand in line for like 20 minutes to get a, to get a beer or something. People are there to enjoy the event, to hang out with their friends, enjoy the entertainment, meet new friends. And none of that, like standing in a line is just not fun. So I sort of had this idea bubbling around in the back of my mind about how to electronicize the, the drink ticket process. And um, yeah, I think back in 2014, I started working. So towards the end of 2014, Fastbar actually launched. Um, yeah, and now fast forward, here we are, here we are today. So I find it really interesting that you, so coming over, working for Microsoft, you got that crazy dev background to build what you need. And then, you know, a, a passion party growing into obviously feeling a need for mm -hmm. people to get in the social event business. 
and then just creating, I just think it's awesome, just create the technology that you need to solve for event problems. So I think that's super cool. So Shindig, and then the, you know, and I think when we first met, we talked about the pain point of long bar lines. You know, mm -hmm. I was moving towards, a, for a large tech event, thousand plus people, we were moving towards, do we host more drink tickets and, you know, get so to, close that point of sale transaction time down? Do we uh, do fully hosted? You know, how do we get people their drinks? And some of those events were just a couple hours long, you know, and say yeah. they get in there a thousand people and we would put more bars, more servers, but inevitably it just seemed like it was always a pain point. So, so you solve for that with fast bar. And so share yeah. with our, our event planning audience a little bit about what that is and how it works. Yeah, so basically FastBar is a, is a cashless payment technology or, or a contactless payment technology for events. And so the way that it works, um, when attendees arrive, they get themselves a wristband, which looks like this. And this is actually um, what's called RFID or NFC wristband. So in here is a little chip. And primarily on that chip is like a unique identifier. And so what happens is when somebody arrives at the event, we will issue them a wristband and connect it up with their credit card, or they could load cash onto it. And then once that once that's completed, and that process takes about 20 seconds or so, then uh, they're kind of good to go. So once they get to the point of sale, um, the bartender or whoever's operating the point of sale just rings up what they need, and the attendee will literally just tap it, uh, and their transaction is completed in, in less than a second. So it sort of takes away all of the hassle of dealing with the drink tickets and you know, when you do an event with drink tickets, you have the green ones for the beer and the blue ones for the wine and the pink ones for the cocktails or whatever. But then you get up there and you're like, oh, hang on, which, which color do I need? Like I wanted a beer, but I only have this other drink ticket or, or vice versa. It becomes a real hassle for attendees. And um, especially these days with either paper tickets or tokens, uh, I was reading some, some guidelines that the, WFEA, the Washington Festivals and Events Association put out, um, trying to like provide recommendations for people when live events do come back, how to handle like contactless experiences. And um, if you're using cash, obviously that's a big problem, um, handing, like handling cash, everyone's fingers are touching it, ripe for like spreading, you know, viruses and stuff like that. Um, and even with with tokens, they're talking about like sanitizing tokens between use. Oh and wow, yeah. You can you can see how that's like a that that would be required, but at the right. same time, I mean, imagine having to do that like as an event organizer, you've got so much stuff going on, and now you've got another thing you've got to add to your plate of like collecting and sanitizing these tokens before you can put them back in circulation. Yeah, um, it's crazy. It's you know what's interesting, Breton, is that you, so the wristband technology, you were kind of out front with that. You know, I did an event for Chase Bank in uh, January and we were at Disney World in Orlando and uh, we had, of course, that, you know, you checked in at the front desk and here was this your, your unique Mickey Mouse branded ears that yeah. sit on this van. And then, so people have gotten accustomed to this concept of you know scanning and you're keeping up with me and attached to an account but when you came out with this this is really early and for and first you know i know when we were talking about the prototype we were talking about the size of the band and how that would work and will the customers feel comfortable giving their credit card information and what about mm -hmm. fraud and you know really yeah. working through all those things but i think it's an incredible um, event planner tool to put in their toolkits to be able to have this technology that expedites spar lines that identifies people with their money and so you know nobody it's a hassle you don't want to go to a fun party and lose money lose your id carry cash how do you carry your wallet your purse i mean it just solves for so many things and then let's see the band again i wanted to talk about with the event planners about the opportunity to spawn the sponsorable opportunity so you've got lift there as uh, a custom wristband that's cloth yep. and then as you and i shared you can actually have lift preload a free drink a custom cocktail for every person so when they go to the bar and run it underneath the scanner then yep. it says lift bought you a drink or something fun like that right so you yeah you, precisely yeah, yeah i love that yeah, yeah. so and, this one's actually from oktoberfest northwest which is an event here locally 
Um, so we ran their VIP section last year. So you can see, we can see the VIP. Yeah. The there. Love and that. And it's sponsored by Lyft. And so here you have like the event logo here and the event color. Um, and then like the sponsor logo on the, on the band. This is another similar story with a, a customer we worked with last year called Charleston Pride. So this is their VIP wristbands. Love that. And you can see the different like sponsor logos and whatnot. So yeah, it's, it's really customizable. Um, yeah. In fact, a lot of events turn that into like a, a profit center. So they'll actually, um, you know, they pay X dollars for the wristbands, but they'll, they'll sell a sponsorship on those wristbands, which actually covers the cost and helps offset some of the costs of fastball for them as well. Right. And so then all the bars have to adopt, you have your own technology that comes in as scanners, right? So you, when they yeah. come in, they can either preload money ahead of time in the registration process, right? So they can skip this all together and just pick up their wristband yep. or you'll, you'll have separate, when they go through reg, they'll go to another stop to load on money onto their, onto their fast bar, you know, wristband. Correct. Yeah. So I, I can show you how it works. If you guys like. have it. Yeah. 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 So, um, basically, as you mentioned, there's a lot of different ways people can get a wristband. Some of our events will actually distribute wristbands ahead of time. For example, mm. if it's like a corporate event and they are including X number of drinks for their corporate holiday party or whatnot, um, attendees can like collect the wristband from the office beforehand and they can even link up their credit card online so that if they want to go beyond those two drinks or three drinks that are included, then they can. Nice. Uh, and so we actually worked with F5 Networks earlier this year, back in January for their holiday party. And that worked really, really smoothly. So most attendees collected their wristband at a couple of different events they had at the office, like that week before the main event um, that was held at the um, Hyatt Regency downtown. And then they collected their wristbands, they connected them up. And as soon as they walk into the event, there's no registration process. It's, it's all done. They just right. got to start tapping. Right. But for events where there is registration, there's a few different ways to do it. But a real common way is attendees will arrive and they'll hand over their credit card to the staff so they can go ahead and swipe it. Um, the system, as you mentioned before, about like the, the opportunity to, for Lyft to give people a free drink or something like that, um, there's a few different ways to do that. But one way is what we call these attendee types. So you know how sometimes oh, nice. you have an event that has like general admission attendees, maybe yes. they have to pay for everything. VIP attendees get three free drinks and ultra VIP attendees get free everything or whatever the case is. You can do a lot of different rules and stuff like that. The system's very flexible. But nonetheless, somebody arrives, we swipe a card, um, we enter in the CVV, and then we're going to grab somebody's cell phone number. So I'll use mine. Nice. And this is how they can get their text message receipts. Um, and then now we'll just go ahead and tap the wristband. And you can connect up as many wristbands as you like. So we have two. Nice. I cannot believe it. So in the sense the first iteration of this thing, how many improvements you've made. It's so cool. I don't know that I've seen the that particular process like that you've made that super quick so so now i'm in you just gave me my wristband and i you literally just swap my card it's associated and off we go and these wristbands are yep. you push the thing up so they don't fall off and yeah yeah once yeah. they they have like a secure clasp on so when yeah. you move it up like it doesn't come back down so it's not going to fall off someone's wrist um and then so we now send I, them and i just put record. in how much money i want oh it sends me a text Nice. Yep, sends you a text message so that you can check your tab. Um, with the card basing, it's actually just like running a tab. So you don't need to put some form of limit on it or Got it. Um, you don't need to like reload anything. You, you can do that with cash if you want. So if events um, are using cash, then um, you can load on like 50 bucks and then you spend down against the balance and it won't let you go over that. But if you use a card, it's literally just like you go to the bar and you put down your card and you just run an open tab. And how many events are people trying to like, even if they're a salesperson, they meet someone event, let me buy you a drink, right? So you now have a potential customer and you would like to host their beverage and, you know, just to be able to scan this thing and let it go on the corporate card and, uh, or, or whatever card they've provided. Um, it's really, I just think it's so forward thinking around event pain points like, bar lines but also just 
you know, that point of sale kind of a bummer, or again, how do I run a tab so I don't have to keep presenting my card every time I come yeah. up with a different customer. Um, and then the branding opportunities and also the VIP being able to preload. And um, I just, I just think it's an amazing thing. So, so you're, we're in the live event business in January. You're doing this great F5 event. You're using their fast bar wristbands, their wristbands, and they rock. And then we get thrown into this uh, COVID-19 situation. So, tell me, how are you processing, and what kind, what is what impact has that had on your business uh, immediately, and then kind of long term? What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think anybody who's in the live event space is obviously. Uh, disproportionately affected by COVID compared to a lot of other industries because in many cases things have just stopped and so we found that um, with, with our business we had all, all of our events that were already booked for like March and beyond all got cancelled um, and then we had some events were sort of postponed um, but those ones also cancelled and then everything over the summer pretty much cancelled um, everything that we had in the pipeline cancelled and there's still kind of a big question mark over events later this year. Um, I expect probably fourth quarter we'll start to see some events come back but I think like like anybody in the event industry it's definitely a very challenging time and we've found everything just kind of paused um, and, and it's, it's sort of it's, it's definitely very unfortunate. I mean we've had some of our some of our customers who were throwing, let's say, a beer festival, and they're expecting like two, three thousand people. It's like a, it's a big event for them, for their community, um, and that was scheduled for over the summer. And unfortunately, like the event is cancelled, and the entire events team is laid off. Um, and so, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of that, which is just it's really unfortunate. Um, I fully believe that live events will come back because it's sort of people have an innate human desire to like want to connect with others and to like live events are just fun. You know, it's not the same. If, if you go to a concert, like you can watch a concert on online, but that is nothing like actually being there in the atmosphere with all of the rest of the people. So I don't think it's going to be replaced um, by, by, by virtualized things, but it, it is going to take a while before, events can come back and we can have those you know smaller and, and bigger events again so it's going to be a little while before it comes back well what i find is so unique about our industry you know is well particularly our industry that there is this kind of inherent nimbleness to what we do you know you roll up and all yeah. of a sudden it was supposed to be sunny and now it's raining you know what do you you're, yep. you're put in this immediate crisis situation that you have to think fast to be solution oriented but i find what's really interesting brendan when we were talking now as we go back into live events there's a sensitivity around exchanging things and so you yep. you already you built this technology this incredible live event tool before this even happened and now I, I see ways as we move back into live where you're going to be positioned to take full advantage and be and have a a tool that not only met my my pain point of my bar, long bar lines, but mm -hmm. now it's going to provide that kind of you know uh, tra transaction list as far as touching the, you know yep. whether it's coins or cash or credit cards. Um, you know, I stayed at a, I actually stayed at a hotel recently and I got to check in and, you know, you can't touch anything. They can't look at your ID. You have to just hold yep. it. So there, that sensitivity, you're going to be primely positioned to provide this proven technology. I mean, you've done amazing yep. festivals, right? With thousands and thousands of people. Um, I'm, what, I'm curious if you thought about other ways that you ex can expand the services on it to kind of meet the new normal as we go forward. Yeah, that's a great question, and I think I, I think you're right that fundamentally, sort of what what we saw like back when I started Fastbar, really it was about solving this particular pain point, but it was also attaching to a, a trend which is moving more towards like a cashless society, and back in those early days, um, Apple Pay came out, and it was it was announced fairly early on. Um, as I'd started work on, on Fastbar actually. And so I actually got a bunch of questions from people like in, potentially investors and stuff like that at the time. And they were like, well, doesn't this negate the need for, for what you're doing? And I'm like, no, this actually helps because contactless payments, 
they're actually quite broadly used in other countries, but in the US, not so much. But things like Apple Pay really have helped consumers understand, oh, there's, a, there's more ways for me to pay than just handing over cash or swiping a card. It's like, oh, I can now pay on my phone and now I can pay on my yeah. wrist. And so there's definitely a trend happening there. And so I think what, what will end up happening with COVID is it will actually accelerate that trend, especially in the event industry. Because um, as you said, like people, uh, guests and event planners likewise are going to be very cautious of that. Like as a guest, you know, a, a lot of guests are going to be hesitant if they go to an event, they've got to be touching a lot of things or handing over right. money and stuff like that. And likewise, as the planners, like, you know, people are going to be feeling that way. And so you want to be able to provide a solution for people. And I think that um, in, the, in, in the, the payment element, there's obviously a lot of different things that an event planner and organizer needs to, to think about and worry about. But that payment element, I think, yeah, Fastbar is in, in a great position to help, help events um, eliminate the, the contact and the hassle from, from that space. And it's gonna help them check some boxes in terms of like being you know, COVID compliant or whatever. Um, and also help attendees feel more comfortable. At the same time, it's actually going to help them make a bunch more money and get a lot better data. And so there's a lot of other ancillary benefits as well. But I think that when events do start to come back, it's going to be even more important. You know, we were yeah. already seeing the trend of just more and more events starting to adopt this kind of technology. Um, still a long way off before it's like really widespread. Mainstream, yeah. Mainstream. I would um, agree a couple of things. You know, I think that the Apple Pay and just using the phone is just building consumer confidence around using that kind of a tool. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is I, I did hear recently someone suggesting that the whole COVID situation is not a disruptor, it's an accelerator, which I, I've been thinking about that a lot. I think that they're right in some ways. It's an accelerator. Um, you know, I, we've... I've, been in and around the opportunity to learn about beacons and you know scanning a QR code on a badge and there's all these things that this RFID you know being able to attach a, a wearable uh, device and have it track what you're doing where you're going pay for your bar mm -hmm. lines you know kind of an all-in-one one of the things with moving to digital events is we are getting such incredible data around what these attendees are doing, what's their movement like, you know, how long did they sit in this session and, you know, where did they go next? What, what sessions were most popular? Um, so what's interesting to me as we move forward is consumer confidence in the wearable device, right? To go mm -hmm. ahead and track what I'm doing at your event. And then you've got this kind of overarching pay cashless society. And yeah. now this concern for contact, contact, yeah. you know, less experiences and I just I feel like it's primed to be able to maybe expand what you you know what your wristbands do um, yeah. you know there were a lot of people that used a um, scanners and the QR codes when you do a new trade show and then you know each person would have to buy rent one of those and track yeah. who came to their booth I mean just imagine if everybody had that where they could just put the same wristband kind of a just think of all the places they would touch that they need to be tracked yeah. Um, and and kind of incorporate that into your one wristband and then it's also yeah. the ability to because I could see even a merch store you know being able to go into a merch store and scan your um, you know your wristband and I think this partnership sponsorship opportunities are really great you know we would have drink tickets and say this drink ticket bought to you by Verizon you know it'd be mm -hmm. a little logo on a ticket where you got this thing that's around every it's almost like you know this lanyard branding yeah. where uh, you know, it's just a, I think a higher visibility with these wristbands and, um, also thank you, Jack Daniels for my drink. And yeah, it's yeah. really, it's such a cool piece of technology and I know it's rough, but I feel like you're just going to hit it out of the park when we start gathering again, to be able to take your fundamental device and make it a great event solution for, you know, for planners to be able to say, Yes. You know, and it's interesting. And you and I have, again, worked on this for a while. So we've, you have to get the venue to buy into the fact that their bar devices need to have a scanner mm -hmm. on it. And, um, but I just commend your work on behalf of all event planners to solve our, long, our bar line issues with great technology. And then, you know, giving us the time to onboard with the concept and 
um, I can see some of my some of my clients that are not as tech savvy really having a resistance, you know, being late adopters for this. But but the majority, and we do a lot of tech events and stuff where they're going to have no problem going. Okay, cool. I'll put my credit card on here. You know, your credit card sits on an Uber app. You know what's? Yeah, what's, yeah. Well, you know, that's the, actually, it, it's funny you mentioned Uber because that's sort of one of the the um, payment experiences I, that I kind of wanted to replicate because mm. Uber, if you think about it, back in the day when we had to take cabs and you get to the airport or wherever you're going and then you want to pay with a credit card and you kind of get the stink eye from the cab driver who doesn't really want to take the credit card because it's sort of a hassle for him and it's costly and all the rest of it. Yeah. And then you got to sit there for like five minutes when the machine doesn't work, then he gets out the old clackety clack thing and it's just a real hassle. And then when Uber came along, it's like I get to my destination, I just get out yeah. and it just happens automatically. <laughs> and I've got the, the cards on file and, and that, that's sort of what I wanted to replicate with FastPass. So when an attendee, once they get their wristband and they buy stuff, we actually missed that portion, so I'll show you that real quick. Um, oh, yeah. So this is the point of sale. This is what the, the bartenders, and it can be used to sell food or merchandise or, or beverages, whatever you want. Uh, but what would you like to order from our virtual bar here? Oh, a t-shirt in the bottom right corner, Alex, okay. for 500. Excellent. <laughs> uh, is champagne as well to go with that? Oh, well, you know me. Yes. <laughs> past 12 o'clock. I'll, I'll take a beer to mix it up. Uh, All right, cheers. Says that's 35 bucks. Let me just get this guy turned on. So that thing sits on the back of the, the POS yeah. device. As soon as the bartender says go, it's asking them to swipe it. The attendee tap their wristband. Well, they actually just need to need to hold it close there and that's just, amazing and now i have a t-shirt and some champagne and we're drinking and we're enjoying the yeah, event absolutely super then, cool i i go ahead uh, i was just gonna say once you're finished at the event you just you, you have the wristband on you just walk away and the tab automatically closes um and you don't need to worry about it. so it's just like that uber kind of like experience yeah, that's super cool. Um, well, we have a couple minutes, so I want to make sure that um, all of our event planners know where to connect with you to learn more about this for their next live event, whenever that might be. Yeah. So, uh, it, do you want to share LinkedIn? What's your preference? Fast, go to your website. Oh, the website's probably easiest. Um, okay. So that's just getfastbar.com. G-E-T-F-A-S-T-B-A-R.com. And I'm sure you've got to provide the link in the YouTube notes or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that, that's the easiest way and you can learn all about FastBar on there and check out like some of the key things that we, we help with and some of the features and whatnot. And then there's, there's a form on there that they can connect with us, uh, which sends us an email and we can get in touch. And, um, you yeah, know, like I said, once the events start up again, we can, we yeah. can certainly see, see how we can help. Well, and I think, you know, as we start to plan, and I've been busy this week looking at 2022 for live events. So, you know, they're, they're coming. We're coming back. Um, already oh, yeah. need even that. But I just appreciate um, your partnership, your work on behalf of event planners, your uh, being up front with the technology that will help us, you know, execute a great guest experience. Um, and uh, so I thank you today for sharing your fast forward thing. I'm excited to use it at our next live event. And um, all of our meeting and event planners, stay tuned. We will be back next week with another Toolkit Tuesday. So thank you, Brenton. Appreciate having you here today. No worries. Thanks for having all me. All right. Take Cheers. care. Bye.